Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Vishwajit Dhar and we are going to talk about the make in India and related to the FDI flows or the foreign direct investment flows to India. Vishwajit, you have been studying the issue of FDI flows, make in India and so on. Do you think this make in India slogan has led to great, greater investments in Indian economy? Study that we are still doing and we just uh, published some preliminary results of this study on FDI. This is an ongoing study that we have and we looked at this period um, since uh, the Make in India was announced in September 2014, um, particularly because there have been uh, a number of uh, reports and parliament questions through which uh, there have been claims that the Make in India has been, uh, has been fueled by FDI flows. Uh, so we tried to understand what the reality is and whether these claims can actually be justified. And we found that uh, you know it's, there isn't much of an evidence on that uh, there's a link between FDI inflows and the make in India. There are two things that I think your study seems to show. One is that the bulk of the FDI seem to have come in what are called brownfield investments, which is already existing companies being taken over by global capital, which doesn't add to the extra productive capacity in the country. The second is round tripping. Let's discuss the brownfield uh, expansion, brown, brownfield investments first. Do you think that bulk of the uh, capital that has come in is really coming through this route? Let me just take one step behind, you know, because a lot of people don't understand what this FDI is all about, you know. Now, FDI, you know, as we know, is the foreign direct investment. And, that, and, and why is it so important? Why is the government of India going and making such a pitch for foreign direct investment? This is because foreign direct investment is supposed to be long-term investment as opposed to other forms of investment like foreign portfolio investment or foreign institution invest investors which just come in the sh stock market and go away. So hot money. In hot money. Sense. And even portfolio investment is short term. Uh, so the, if India is in interested in, in development and wants development finance, it should actually pitch for foreign direct investment. Now. The, the forms in which FDI uh, uh, gets counted, um, and it, this is a statistical issue, is very interesting. The first is that, uh, you know, the for foreign direct investment has uh, flows that are coming, new flows which come from outside. And these are what we call the greenfield investments. So new capacity is formed, so there is a net addition to the, uh, the capacity that is already existing in the country. The second component of FDI is uh, uh, what we call brownfield investment. The brownfield investment is basically takeovers, like what just you mentioned, uh, a takeover of existing Indian companies by the foreign investors. Now, in case of brownfield investment, therefore, there is no net addition to capacity. The ownership of an enterprise changes hands, and in most cases, we have found that the foreign investor does not even invest in the existing plant and machinery, just, you know, uh, takes uh, the uh, existing plant and machinery forward. The third component is very interesting. The third component is what we call retained earnings. Now, the retained earnings are uh, the, you know, out of the profits that a company earns, a part of the profits are distributed to the shareholders as dividends and the part and one part is retained. And periodically, these retained earnings are capitalized. They are put into the equity capital. They are given to the existing shareholders. So, uh, so if there is a foreign company which is uh, making a profit in India, uh, remember, if it's making a profit in India, it's making a profit in Indian rupees. And once it is capitalized, you know, then it becomes the Indian the rupees. Then they convert, get converted into foreign liabilities. Because against those higher equity capital, you know, there are going to be higher claims, uh, uh, you know, which the uh, foreign investor can make and they, that can result in higher dividend outflow. Yeah? So here you can say that quite contrary, the reverse is happening. Instead of foreign capital coming into the country, here internal resources are going out, of, can, can go out of the country. Yeah? So this, these are the two components, the brownfield, the takeovers and retained earnings are becoming larger by the day. Yeah? And uh, our argument is that you know, net capital is not coming in. 
other part of your study deals with also export of capital from Indian, Indian companies. And a lot of that seems to be coming back from tax havens, Mauritius route, particularly or Singapore, and coming in as if it's foreign investment. Did you find a major significant uh, aspect of the FDIs to be this? Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, see, uh, uh, when we talked about round tripping, the first country that came that comes to our mind is China, because uh, we knew for a fact that a large part of the uh, of foreign direct investment in China was basically, you know, those expatriate Chinese who used to bring in money through the Hong Kong route. Now that started happening in India. Uh, Indian uh, capital is actually going out. Uh, there is a lot of outflows taking place now. And we are now finding evidence of capital going out of the country, getting parked in one of the, you know, the Singapore and Malaysia, or uh, Singapore and Mauritius, and coming back as foreign direct investment. So it's it's a it's a real irony because you know Indian capital, once it come comes back through the Mauritius or a Singapore route, then gets counted as foreign capital and gets preferential treatment preferential treatment and a very important component of this is or a very important part of this is that you know there are these bilateral investment treaties we have with many countries of course now the government has uh, has has decided to knock off the old uh, agreements and bring in a new uh, uh, framework agreement so a foreign investor coming from these jurisdiction then gets protection of the Indian government. If the government of India does not behave itself properly with the foreign investors, then the foreign investor can take an, the Indian government to a private arbitration. And this is the investor state dispute settlement process. So Indian companies don't have that freedom. Indian companies can't you know, take the in Indian government uh, to a uh, foreign arbitration in Singapore and get them to the cleaners. But the foreign investor has that. So, so you can actually see the advantages that there are quite apart from the tax breaks and other advantages and which is the, uh, the ISDS. The main conclusion is that it, is, it may not be uh, correct to say that uh, the Make in India actually triggered FDI inflows. There are many other reasons. Uh, you know, we also pointed out that there are st statistical issues. RBI has reported an inflow which uh, which uh, uh, took place much earlier, if you look at the company uh, records, um, during this period. So there was, uh, the, the actual inflows then took place between uh, 2014 and 2016, they actually took place earlier. But RBI suddenly re realized that there was a missing link somewhere, they had the problem of data, so they put in the uh, they, they filled up the gap in this period, so the numbers went up. So there are a number of things that we have actually worked on uh, to show that um, uh, you know, this tenuous link does exist between FDI and Make in India. Last question, what is the uh, net inflow against the net outflow? It's, it's getting to on, on the negative side now. And again, this is a question that government of India must ask, ask itself, that you know, of course, uh, when we are hankering for foreign capital, uh, we are telling everyone that we are a country which is short of capital. Yeah. So if you are a country short of capital, why is it that so much of outflows are taking place? You know, why are we getting a negative uh, negative balance on the in net inflows? Yeah. Uh, so um, our argument is that uh, there are perverse incentives uh, for uh, uh, foreigners. And that is prompting many, you know, Indian uh, firms, Indian capital, to actually move out. You know, I, w I would not, not uh, say just now that whether there is a flight of capital, but uh, at the moment we only say that uh, the uh, the net balance on FDI is turning out to be negative. So two years of make in India, we are getting a negative. FDI inflow. That is right. That's a very significant statement. Thank you, Vishwajit, for being with us. We'll follow this as your research progresses and check out what are the conclusions you come to in more detail. Thank you very much for being with us. It's all the time we have for News Click today.